part he's looking at now is called the oleo and serves as a shock absorber. Check the fittings. Be sure the fitting bolts are secure and safetyed. And incidentally, when we say a bolt is safetyed, we mean it has a wire or cotter key through the end, like this. So even if the nut gets loose, it can't come off. Be sure the oleo is up, like this. Not down, like this. Glance at the tires. If they look mushy, ask the plane captain to check them. And around the engine, always watch for signs of dripping gasoline or oil. Oil or gasoline on the pavement under the plane or on the landing gear struts probably indicates a leak and calls for investigation by the plane captain. As a further check, you may want to open the accessory compartment. This is done by loosening a couple of fasteners in the fairing. The gasoline and oil lines run through this compartment and any leaks will probably be immediately apparent here. And be sure the compartment is securely closed. When this cover comes open during flight, it does strange things to the aerodynamics of the plane. Or it may rip off completely and go flying back, endangering the tail assembly. At this point, you glance quickly at the back of the engine to be sure all is well there. What do you look for? Wires which have become detached. Cracked cylinders or exhaust manifolds. Take hold of the carburetor. Try to shake it. If it's at all loose, the plane isn't airworthy. Now you retrace your steps along the leading edge of the wing, going clear back to the tip. Then forward and in again to a point directly in front of the propeller, but a respectful distance away from it. We can see everything we need to see from here without risking our necks. We can be sure the prop isn't nicked or pitted or cracked. You can check the fitting bolts around the hub. While here, look at the front of the engine for loose wires or cracked cylinders. And notice particularly the spark plug wires to see that they are safety. From this point, you can get a good look at the entire underside of the fuselage and the underside of the top wing. Here again, look for tears in the fabric or wrinkles or bulges. Check the oleos to see that they are evenly inflated. Notice whether the plane is setting evenly on the ground and is therefore properly balanced. If the landing gear is in any way structurally out of line, you must catch that at this point. Also, see that both wheels are chocked. Now you proceed to the tip of the right wing, still showing the same respect for the propeller. You begin at the wing tip and work in toward the engine, inspecting the same points on the right wing as were covered on the left. You don't open this side of the accessory compartment, but you do check to see that the fairing is fastened down tight. The oleo on this side the tire, and the back of the engine. Then, back to the tip of the wing and around the trailing edge for inspection there, covering the same points were covered on the other wing. Aft, along the fuselage, looking for tears, bulges, or wrinkles. Underneath the tail assembly, first the rudder cable, then the wires for streamlining and tautness. The fabric, and especially the elevator. On top, the fabric and the wires. Inspect fittings on the elevator and the rudder. Turn the rudder for a look at the rudder horn, first on one side and then on the other. Of course, some pilots like Mac here seem to doubt the importance of inspecting such items as the rudder horn. One small fact seems to have missed friend Mac. An airplane is neither useful nor healthy unless all the controls are in good working order. The rudder horn is in an exposed position. Occasionally, it gets broken. And here's an example of what can happen. Friend Mac, who uses his brakes too much in taxiing anyway, wouldn't notice it even if he had no rudder control at all. All is well, thinks Mac. He pulls around into the takeoff position, locks his tailwheel, and gives her the gun. As we were saying, an airplane isn't very useful or very healthy unless all the controls are in good working order. If you want to play safe, always inspect both rudder horns and all control cables and control surfaces. 
Also, inspect the tail wheel for inflation. The tail wheel is held in position by an oleo, which must also be kept inflated. Otherwise, the tail will drop down like this. The tail wheel assembly will not have the shock absorbing qualities which protect the tail from shock in hard landings. So check this. And then take a good look at the top side of the upper wing. This is about the only place that you can see it from the ground. After inspecting the left side of the tail assembly, proceed up the left side of the fuselage to the baggage compartment. You always open the baggage compartment. What you carry there varies with different stations and different types of planes. But you don't want to carry any unnecessary weight. And should the compartment accidentally come open in flight, you don't want dainty little items like wheel chocks to go spraying out over the landscape. Also, in some types of primary trainers, there should be a first aid kit in this container in the top of the baggage compartment. And be sure the compartment fasteners are secure. Now, you already know what happens to an airplane when it runs out of oil. Well, it won't run without gasoline either. True, you have a gasoline gauge to tell you how much gas is in the tank, but gauges sometimes get stuck. Which probably accounts for the old saying among flyers that the best gauge is your finger. So, you stand on the seat of the front cockpit, take off the gas cap, and find out for sure whether the tank's full. Never take a plane out that isn't full right up to the top. And put the cap back on so it'll stay. If it comes off in flight, it may hit you and knock you out. And the high octane gasoline spraying back on you may burn your skin or injure your eyes, to say nothing of the fire hazard it creates. One other thing. Anytime you're flying solo, always fasten the seat belt in the empty cockpit. Draw it up tight so it won't loop over the stick when you're stunting or inverted. Now, that completes the pre-flight inspection, except for the cockpit, that is. So, let's go over here to an airplane and go through the cockpit check. Okay, now before you get in the airplane, buckle your parachute, chest, and leg straps. Also, check both cockpits for loose gear. Some bad accidents have been caused by loose gear jamming the controls. It can be pretty disconcerting when you're doing acrobatics. Now, the first thing you do when you get in the cockpit is to adjust your seat belt and fasten it. There's no kidding about this. Too many boys have been killed because they didn't make proper use of their seat belt. Take the student who got his nose too high on takeoff. His instructor snapped the stick forward to prevent a stall. When he looked back a moment later, the student wasn't there. The abrupt change in the plane's attitude had thrown him clear out of the cockpit. That student had probably figured there'd be plenty of time to fasten his seatbelt after they were in the air. In inverted flight and in most acrobatics, sometimes even in normal flight in rough air, the seatbelt is the only thing that keeps you in the airplane. So fasten your seatbelt the very first thing when you get in the cockpit. Now these are shoulder straps. There's a little lever on the lower left side of the seat which releases the harness in such a way that a spring on the back gives it a certain amount of stretch. With the harness unlocked, adjust the straps for moderately snug fit. For takeoffs, landings, and acrobatics, lean back, lock the harness so that the spring will no longer allow it to stretch. In case of an accident, it'll hold you back against the seat and keep you from breaking your neck by banging your head against the instrument panel or cowling. After you fasten the seat belt, draw up on the straps at the side until the belt is tight enough to keep you in the plane, but not too tight for comfort. Yes, sir. Mighty important, that seat belt. It even saves lives on the ground. something right. His seat belt is securely fastened. Gas off! Switch off! Leave it to Mac. 
If this ever happens to you, leave your seat belt fastened until someone comes out to let you down gently. Now that your seat belt and shoulder traps are properly adjusted and fastened, drop your hand to the lower right side of your seat. Pull up on the little lever you'll find there. That allows your seat to move up and down. Now adjust the seat so that if you look straight along the top of the fuselage, your line of vision will run directly through the center of the windshield. Release the lever and make sure your seat is locked. 